decided to become a puppy raiser because we'd had a, a pet dog and had died and didn't want to go through that again. So when you have a puppy, you have them for a year and you pass them on and get a new puppy. We have to attend regular meetings and most of the time they're once a week or once every two weeks. And we as a group or as a club get together and we go through training exercises where we go through business such as new rules or regulations that guide dogs have given to us. The process of training is we receive the puppies about eight to ten weeks old. Um, they are bred from a campus in California. Um, guide dogs has their own breeding stock that they um, have set up for this so that they have certain qualities they're looking for. When we get the dogs as raisers, we teach them house manners, we teach them basic obedience and socialization. Um, so they have a foundation to go on to more advanced training when they're older. The difference between an ordinary puppy and a guide dog puppy are the rules and regulations that we as puppy raisers have to follow. So um, he has to learn how to relieve on command. They have to learn to behave very, very well. They're not a pet. Yikira, sit. Good girl. Yikira, down. Good girl. Yikira, OK. First, when I saw puppies, I kind of felt bad for them, thinking, oh no, they're in their little jackets and they can't be doggies and they can't live the doggy life. But let me tell you, after being involved with this program, there is no way that a dog can be involved with this situation and go places and be this calm and this well-behaved without their needs being met, without them being balanced, without them getting their opportunities when they have their jacket off to run, to go for walks, to go crazy in the backyard when their jacket is off. The guide dogs do get to play like the other dogs. Um, they only get about 15 minutes twice a week with hard play with other dogs. When we have them as puppies, um, they have some limitations in what they can do in play. They can't play fetch when they're puppies. So when they're, once they're partnered with their guide dog, some of them do learn to play fetch. Um, labs can get very distracted by fetch games and obsessed with it. So as a puppy, they're limited with that so that they don't see something flying by and go after it instead of doing their job. Um, they get to play tug, they get to play lots of other kinds of games, but not fetch. We've loved every dog we've had, and this is our fifth one that we're raising now, and um, they feel like children. They uh, are, we still keep in touch with um, the, the blind people for our first two that are actually guides right now, and we're keeping in touch with them. The challenges of being a guide dog raiser is that I have to take the dog with me everywhere, but the reward is that I get to take the dog with me everywhere. <laughs> The biggest reward for puppy raising is when you see your dog partnered with their blind person and the impact they have in their life. It makes all of it worth it. I've also met a little girl who was six years old at the time and she was blind and the family had no idea that a guide dog was even a resource for them. So that was, that was the top, like ultimate reward is actually seeing that, oh my gosh, there's something for our daughter that we can help her with.